Yes. Can you see that? Yeah, full screen, please, sir. Perfect. Yes, yes. And well, uh, Dr. Mohamed, it's a huge pleasure to stay here and talk with the, uh, the Berna Institute. It's uh, fantastic. And uh, the COVID-19 provide this way to talk uh, for all over the world. I, we can share some uh, knowledge. And it's a huge pleasure to stay here again for my third time. And uh, I'm very happy with that. And I really like to participate more with you, my friend, and with all your team, because I really think that the future, we need to maintain a little bit this web, web way to, to explain and to export our knowledge, OK? And now my presentation, I will, made, I will talk about the proximal humor fracture. And the proximal humor fracture is a huge uh, 10 to, to talk only in 15 to 30 minutes. So I, I, I will talk about the locking plate. Uh, how can I do the locking plate step by step to show how I made this surgery? I will talk a little bit the introduction for the humor, uh, the proximal humor fracture. And then I will talk about the, the surgery, okay? This is my group from Brazil. I made part from Nyon Institute from Sao Paulo, Brazil, leader by Dr. Jose Carlos Garcia. We are a, a fellow group of shoulder and elbow surgery here in Brazil. Our group has uh, eight years of this study in shoulder and elbow uh, pathologies. I don't have any disclaimer, any company. So uh, let's talk about the proximal humerus fracture. So for introduction, we need to understand a little bit this fracture. This is a very common fracture in elderly people. Uh, some relationship between osteopenia and osteoporosis. Uh, we always need to think about the surgical treatment and the conservative non-surgical treatment. We need to understand the mechanism of trauma, uh, need to understand the biologic age of the patient, and understand the dislocation from the fragments. We need to understand the fracture particularity. And in younger people, uh, normally high energy trauma uh, do this kind of fracture in traffic accidents, in some sports, some convulsions and electric shocks showing in young people this kind of fracture. The epidemiology of the proximal humor fracture uh, occurs in 5% of our fracture of the body and the second most common on the upper limb of the fracture. He loses only to the distal radial fracture. And the relationship between women and men is three women for one man. And there is an exponential increase of this kind of fracture with the aging. So more than 75% of the patients with the proximal humor fracture has more or 60 years old. Paul Vanen showed for us in 2006 another huge study that showed that in 1970, a 32 for 100,000 people has had this kind of fracture. And in 2002, 105 has the same fracture for the same number of people. So we have an increase of this kind of fracture during the time. And Canus, showing for us in 1955 to 2007, we have a, a stabilization of these numbers because we start to uh, have a healthier population. We, we, we try to avoid the, uh, the fall risk from the older patient. And we try to treatment for the osteoporosis with calcium and uh, vitamin D. The mechanism of trauma, uh, in the, number, the huge number, we have 87% of the cases who have the fall from the height. Fractures without or minimally displacement uh, occur in 49 to 45 to 49 percent of the cases. And you have some risk factors. The osteoporosis is the biggest one. The changes in the visual acuity and the balance, we cannot see where we are walking through. The lack of hormonal supplementation therapy has some disturbs uh, in the patient too. Some previous factory, true or more chronic disease and smoking is risk of factors to this kind of uh, pathology. Here is a good study. Uh, they try to create some relationship between the humeral fracture and the hip fracture, but this study showed for us 
during 9.8 years of follow-up of 8,004 NAVU women that there is no relationship between the humerus fracture and the hip fracture. Quite normally, the humerus fracture has some relationship between the elbow fracture and the distal radial fracture, the limb fracture. Uh, another important thing to talk about the proximal humor fracture is the anatomy. So we need to understand that the, the shoulder is crazy because they need to have a huge mobility versus a huge stability. So it's very difficult to maintain that. And when we lose some part of that, we need to create the, recreate the anatomy to maintain the mobility and the stability. We have the ossification centers from the humor head that appear in four to nine months. The great tuberosity is appear in three years and the last tuberosity appears with five years. And these ossification centers will measure between four to seven years old. And these centers, these proximal centers, will, be, will fusion with the diaphysis between the 17 to 20 years old. So in younger patients, we just have the proximal humor fracture through the fragments and we can have a, 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 a center fracture too. 80% of the longitudinal growing for the humerus is becoming to the upper part of this bone. Another important thing in the anatomy is the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff has the most responsibility to make the dislocation from the fragments. The supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres menor, menor a create a posterior and superior dislocation of the greater tuberosity. The subscapularis quite normally create the major dislocation of the less tuberosity. And the pector major create a major dislocation from the diaphysis. And the deltoid can create some dislocation, but we need to understand where is the fracture. If the, the fracture is a little bit higher, uh, we, the deltoid uh, don't uh, make any dislocation. But if the fracture is a little bit lower, the deltoid can create some dislocation too. Another important thing to remember in the anatomy is the neurovascular anatomy, the anterior and posterior circumflex artery. The anterior and posterior have some uh, uh, importance to, to avoid some vascular, to, uh, vascular improve to the humeral head. So we need to take care about both artery. Axillary nerve and the musculoskeletal nerve has some trouble when you have some dislocation in the structure too. So how can, we how can we do our clinical evaluation from this patient? Understand the trauma mechanism, understand associated injuries, try to create some idea for the shoulder function before the injury, if the patient had pain, or if a patient can move your arm, the dominance of the, the, the arm, the history of tumor is quite important to understand if the, the fracture is a pathology fracture or a trauma fracture. The rehabilitation capacity is huge important to understand if the patient can recover your function from the upper limb. Other injuries in the same limb and the nervovascular status is very important to you if you can try a conservative one or a surgical treatment. So to see, to look for this fracture, we need to do some complementary exams. The X-ray is very important and we need to have a 3D view from the shoulder to understand this fracture. So the AP view, the scapular view and the axial view is the most important view from X-ray to understand because in the AP view, you can see the uh, surgical neck and the atomic neck and the great tuberosity. In the uh, 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 scapular view, you can see the dislocation of the great tuberosity. In the axillary view, you can see the articulation if you have some head split and if you have some dislocation for the last tuberosity too. But to improve our knowledge of this factor, the CT scan is very important to see the comminution of the fragment, the dislocation of the fragment, and the relationship between the fracture and the articulation. This uh, is a very good case. If you only make this x-ray, front x-ray, just looking for a, a, a good fracture. But when you try to do a external rotation, a, a, a neutral rotation AP fracture and a, a, a scapular view, 
you can see that you have some dislocation of the humeral head for posterior size. And you can see a double, a double line here, and you can see a dislocation of the humeral head. And then the CT scan can provide for us that yes, this is a fracture dislocation humor that you need to correct by surgery. So don't do only one X-ray. Try to create, try to create a routine to do better X-ray, best X-ray, uh, 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 many numbers of X-rays that you can do. But the CT scan help us a lot. This is a, a, a very good paper from 2014 that try to understand the importance of the 3D CT image. So they take two trauma surgeries, one shoulder surgery, and two fellows, the third ear fellow and one ear fellow, and show for us that the 3D CT improved the inter-observed agreement, but in the less experienced group. So if you are a young surgery, and if you have some doubts about the quality of your X-ray, please do the CT scan to provide a better look and a better understand for your surgery. The classification of proximal humor, uh, proximal humor factors is important. Cocker, Cocher, uh, uh, show it for us. Uh, the first classification of the humor heads, just three parts of, 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 of fracture. Uh, one anatomic neck, epiphyseal, and surgical neck. Codman create the four part fracture using the ossification center to try to understand the vascularization of these fragments. But Charles Near in 70s create this classification using the Codman ideas for the ossification center. But Near try to understand how much the dislocation of this fragment can improve the ischemia from the humeral head. So in the beginning of her study showing that more than one centimeter dislocation fracture or more than 45 degrees of dislocation improve vascular damage. But uh, a couple of years uh, ago, uh, he, the, he changed these numbers for the great tuberosity and showing for us that more than 0.5 centimeters can increase bad, better, uh, uh, worst has, uh, results of this uh, conservative treatment. Near in first study showed for us 80% of the case have no dislocation, but right now this number go to 49%. And the key point is, how can we understand the humeral head blood supply? And now Hertel in 2004 created this fantastic classification that we call like a Lego classification. Then we use the ossification center the dislocation of this fracture, and how can this, this, this ossification center can dislocate to try to understand the indicators of ischemia of the proximal humerus head. So, dorsal medial metaphysis station size, less than 8 millimeters, compromise the major hinge, angular head desviation, tuberosity dislocation, big tuberosity dislocation, fracture dislocation of the head, and head split is the worst part of this fracture to increase the ischemia. And anatomic neck fracture, small calcar compromise, and medial hinge involvement can create 90% of positive predictive to ischemia to some part of the humeral head. This is uh, uh, the draw of Dr. Hertel. For me, it's not a, a, a simple classification because we need to go to the classification to understand what kind of fragment has some dislocation and what kind of fragment has some comminution. But when you understand this classification, for me, you can decide for using a locking plate to use a conservative treatment or to try to change for a reverse atroplasty in the treatment of the proximal humor fracture. So we just have the all classification for me is, is a poor classification. We have a simple fracture, uh, extra-articular simple fracture, uh, extra-articular comminuter fracture, and uh, intra-articular fracture. But this classification do not provide the ischemia of the humeral head. When you talk about the treatment, you have a no surgical treatment. Uh, this, uh, the objective of this treatment is to restore the shoulder function without pain, 
So in elderly patients with a lot of comorbidity and with no dislocation of the fragment, you can do this treatment. Quite normally, you maintain the patient in four to six weeks in a sling position and make some uh, x-rays, uh, weekly x-rays, and with six weeks, we start to uh, rehab this patient with physiotherapy. But the surgery is important because to do a surgery, you need to, we need to evaluate some points. The, per, the personality of the fracture, the bone quality of the patient, the rotator cuff status, the physiologic age of the patient. Uh, normally, you have a 70-year-old patient who, that play tennis three to four times a week. So we need to understand that this patient had to uh, recover the function of the shoulder. So the activity level, we need to take care to. And now I will talk about uh, one kind of treatment that we can do for the proximal humor fracture. Uh, here we have the proximal humor to locking plate. So for me, it's a huge system to improve the stability and the fixation of this kind of fracture. But to understand this, this, this way to treatment the proximal humor fracture, we need to understand the plate. So we have some different holes for this plate. The A hole is here, is the upper part of the plate, is the parallel and upper angle. He go through the upper part of the humeral head to improve, to, to try to not improve the various location. And then we have the number B and the number C. The number B is a converging screw and the number C is a diverging screw to try to avoid the rotation of the humeral head. And the D, you have the LCP that go through this converging and diverging system to try to maintain the position of the humeral head. And the most important screw for this plate is the number E, is the calcar one. The calcar one go to try to maintain this, this humeral head to avoid the various dislocation. And the diaphysis system, we have the oblong uh, screw. For me, is the first screw that I need to put, to need to use, because you can change the position of the plate when you use this kind of screw. And you have the diaphysis LCP, that's this, the second one and the first one, only to fix the plate to the diaphysis. And what is the idea of this plate? Is the restoring the integrity of the calcar to avoid the sacred various dislocation and to improve the consolidation of this fracture. So I would, try, I would like to, to, show, to show for you guys a, a case of mine. Uh, this is a step-by-step, -step, like, like that's, that's the way that I do this kind of fracture. I, every time I made the same stuff to create a, a, a guide uh, to, to do this kind of fracture. So this is a 66 year old female fell down from the stairs and had a trauma in her left, in the left upper limb. This is the fracture. You can see here a surgical neck fracture with some medial dislocation from the diaphysis, a great dislocation for the great tuberosity and the humeral head have some changes like a split, it's like an ice cream fracture the humeral head is looking to the upper part, not looking for the glenoid, but the change the position of the, the humeral head. And you can see here too, the change of the position of the humeral head in this scapular view. But the CT scan improved for us the quality of the support of the calcar and the head is okay. We don't have a split, a head split. So I really think that's for this patient a proximal lock and plate treatment is a good way to avoid a calcification, to, to improve the, the consolidation of this fracture and re recover the function. And here is the surgery. Every time I make my patient in a beach chair position, I make the, the, the dorsal part with 35 to 40 degrees of elevation, not so, not, not, not a nine degrees chair position, but a 30 to 45 degrees position. And I put the radioscopy coming from the head, parallel to the head, to maintain my shoulder completely free to do the surgery, but I can see the articulation in all parts of my surgeries. 
and I try to understand if the proximal humor locking plate is indicated. Remember, to do a proximal leg uh, surgery, you need to have some structure, some uh, uh, some uh, a calcar good uh, position to maintain the virus. So I made some uh, traction in neutral position when I see here, and I do some traction in abduction position because in abduction, I can recover the position of the great tuberosity. So I looking for that. We have some very good structure for the calcar and the great tuberosity go to the position. So it is a very good uh, fracture to do a locking plate. I always do a delta packed approach. I, I, I really don't like to do a lateral approach. Some uh, papers, some, some surgeries, uh, like to do a lateral approach to see the axillary nerve and to put the plate only in the front part of the surgery. But for me, I always learn to do a delta packed approach. I am a very comfortable to do this kind of approach. And I preserve the cephalic vein, the cephalic vein going to the deltoid when I do the when I, when I see, when I, I use my retract, retractors. And in the beginning of the surgery, I find, I found my long head of the biceps. I do the tenotomy of the long head of the biceps quite near to the pector major. And I do the suture, the tenodesis of this uh, long head of the biceps near, close to the pector major to maintain the, uh, the biceps uh, improve, uh, the biceps uh, force. And then I use the biceps groove like a guide. My locking plate always will be a little bit behind uh, to the uh, long head of groove. So I use the groove a lot to understand the fracture. And I know in the medial part of the, of the groove, we have the low, less tuberosity and the other part of the groove at the behind part of the groove, we have the great tuberosity. And then I pass, I pass some suture to the cuff, one suture to the subscapularis, one suture to the supraspinatus, and one suture to the infraspinatus, because with the suture, I can manipulate the fragments to reduce this fracture, to have a fantastic reduction. So during the surgery, I do some tests with some traction to understand the quality of these fragments. And now I will, I, I understand the fracture, so I will try to reduce and fix this fracture. So I pass, uh, in, this, in this picture, we see uh, percutaneously and in the front part of the humor, so we using the, long, the groove of the long head of the biceps, I pass two or three K wires with 1.5 millimeters, and I go with these K wires quite near to the surgical neck fracture. And I stop these wires. And then I will reduce the humeral head. I make some pressure. I open the tuberosities and gently I reduce the head. When I have this good reduction, what I do, I fix with my K wires. I go my K wires through the head and I fix the humeral head in the right position with very good support to the calcar. And then the surgery, we just made 50% of your surgery. Here, you can see a very good position. And then I, I take my sutures for the great tuberosity and the less tuberosity from the infraspinatus and the subscapularis, and I will close the book. I close the great tuberosity and the less tuberosity with sutures to create this kind of reduction. Sometimes we have some conduction here and uh, don't, don't maintain this, this good x-ray. But in the biggest, the, the, the huge part of your surgery, you can recover this kind of reduction. And then the surgery is almost in the end. And then I will fix with my plate. I position my plate in, uh, looking for the scope. I try to find a, the better position for this plate. Remember, the upper part of the plate will stay five to eight millimeters through the greater tuberosity upper part too, and a little bit behind the groove, five to eight millimeters behind the groove, the long head of the biceps groove too. 
With this uh, K-wires, we just have some trouble to pass the calcar screw because we will fix this screw and we will uh, hit the K-wires. So I become to fix the upper part of my screw, my parallel screw, my divergent and my convergent screw, and two diaphos screw. Then we have a good fixation, put back my K wires and finish the fixation. Passing the calcar screw and do some sutures through the plate, fixing the great tuberosity and the less tuberosity, passing to the cuff. This kind of suture improve the proximal fixation to the plate and will give to you a better, uh, strong fixation and improve the consolidation of this part. And this is the end of my surgery. So this both screw, I pass in the end of my fixation. Here, my fracture. Here is my fixation and my reduction. Here's the fracture and here's the reduction. And I really think that if you do a, 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 a way every time make the same way of this kind of surgery, we always will have a very good success to do this surgery. If you try to reduce this, this fracture using a plate-like guide, sometimes it's very difficult because the humeral head quality bone, the quality bone of the humeral head is poor. So if you pass some screw over there to make like a joystick, it's difficult to do that and you can create another fractures in the humor head. Some importance of the, uh, of the uh, scope during the surgery. This is a paper for 2017 that you need to understand if you have bigger screw during the surgery. So go to the uh, neutral position, neutral position, going to internal rotation to understand if you, do, if you did not pass some screw through the humeral head, some biggest screw. If you, if you did that, please change your screw. Another good uh, paper from Dr. Pejamas is a uh, 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 try to understand the distance between the calcar screw and the calcar. And if you have less than 12 millimeter through the screw from the calcar is the best uh, fixation to avoid a, a, a virus failure. If you have more than 12 millimeters, is a predictive that you can fail your fixation. This another very good uh, paper. Uh, uh, understand in a three-part fracture, uh, what's the problem to the fixation? When, when we can uh, made a bad, a, a, a worse fixation. So, if you have a medial comminution. Uh, decrease stability, anatomical restoration of the calcar and its fixation with a medial support, a good calcar support uh, screw, decrease the virus flare, failure. What is? If you have a medial comminution, is a, it's not a good kind of, of uh, fracture to do a proximal locking plate. You need to think another way to, to recover, to recover this patient. But if you can put a very good screw and had a very good medial support in the calcar using the screw, you avoid a various failure. You have some complications with this fracture. The infection is one of the highest complications. Instability, when you do not understand the posterior anterior dislocation, viscous consolidation, pseudoarthrosis, a vascular necrosis, neurological injury and vascular injury, you can have to. So if you try to do a plate like that, you need to uh, treatment the complications too. So uh, uh, sometimes of uh, some trauma surgeries only do the plate, but can't do, uh, uh, can treatment the complications. Uh, our show, uh, 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 I always talk with my shoulder uh, guys, my shoulder friends that our shoulder surgery uh, need to treatment the fracture and the complications because we will improve the idea to recover our patient. Dr. Mohamed, it's a huge pleasure to stay here again. 
I, I, I really, really was uh, very emotive when you, when you said for me that we have another, another website to talk again. Uh, I hope that I can uh, improve some knowledge for you guys. And I only said that I am some sad because here in Brazil is five, almost 5.30 five, uh, p.m. And I have to see some patients in my office. So I need to take out of the presentation. But uh, I am very proud to participate of that. And I want to be part of that again. Dr. Raffaele, it's a, it's a great honor and great pleasure for us to be with us again and again. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, if we have, uh, if we can receive some questions or uh, you are busy now? No, no, no. Let's give me, let's give me three. No, yes, yes, we can have some questions. Okay. No problem, no problem. Have some time. Just five minutes, uh, we can receive any questions. I'll start with a question from me, sir. Uh, if you have three and four part, or three or four part fractured location, would you like to try reduction and internal fixation, or you go directly to replacement? Uh, uh, this is what I said in the, the in the presentation. Yeah. We need to understand the patient. If I have a 75-year-old patient uh, with no activity, no exports, no uh, activity, and some history of distal fracture or some history of osteoporosis, I go to reverse arthroplasty. I think the reverse arthroplasty is more predictive in this kind of patient. But if I have the same kind of uh, uh, fracture in a 60, 55, 65 year old patient with a lot of activity, an active patient with good bone, I try to fix the surgery to recover this patient, to fix the fracture to recover this patient. So the, the proximal humor fracture, there is no rules. We need to understand each patient, the, uh, the age of the patient, the activity of the patient, the, the complication that the patient has, some disease that the patient had. And for me, if the patient can't, can't do a, a good uh, physiotherapy, it's very difficult to recover this shoulder. If the patient can do a good physiotherapy, I prefer to do a reverse arthroplasty because I will fix the great tuberosity, the last tuberosity. I maintain this patient for five to six weeks in sling and go for movement. So I prefer to do that. Yeah. Intraoperative, sir, when you, when you uh, prefer to do fixation, uh, would you have a uh, prosthesis uh, just in case uh, you change your, uh, your mind? Yes, yes. Uh, in, uh, 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 here in Brazil, uh, in the hospital that I work, I can have the plate and the, uh, the arthroplasty, the replacement in my uh, surgical room. So when I do this traction in neutral traction and I don't have any support in the medial hinge, I quite normally change my fixation for a reverse arthroplasty. But if I have a good humeral head, a good support to the medial hinge, I quite normally go to the locking plate fixation. Yes, sir. Dr. Ahmed Sheikh, we are ready to receive yeah. questions. Yeah, just one following question to your question, Prof. Ashab. Uh, 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 Prof. Rafaeli, you, you mentioned reverse arthroplasty. What about hemiarthroplasty, the, 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 the old treatment for hemiarthroplasty, uh, proximal humerus? I, I, I really, I, I, I made a lot of hemiarthroplasty for, for humor, proximal humor fracture. We just have, we just have a reverse replacement here in Brazil. I think it's six years that I had, that we have a reverse atroplasty here in Brazil. So I made a lot of hemiatroplasty, uh, but it's, it's, it's very, very difficult to understand, to predict the results of the hemiatroplasty. There is some surgery that you, that you made a fantastic great and lower tuber tuberosity reduction, you recover the design of the humor and the patient don't have a good range of motion. And sometimes you don't do a very good fixation of the great tuberosity and the lower tuberosity and the patient has a fantastic uh, uh, range of motion. If I have a split head in a patient with 55 or 60 year old, I quite normally go to amyotropathy. I will maintain the, the reverse a little bit in older patient, elderly patient. But 
if I have a, six, a 70, 75 year old patient with a, 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 a very a commuted fracture with no major support, I will go for the reverse because reverse we can rehab a little bit faster than Amy. Mm -hmm. And the predictive of the results of the Amy atroplasty is a little bit better when you compare to the Amy atroplasty. I really think that the Amy atroplasty has some place in the treatment of the of the humeral, proximal humeral head fracture. But this uh, area to use the amartropacy is becoming thinner and thinner oh. and thinner with the time. Yeah. Uh, one question, one please. final question. Yes, Professor Matt, yeah, go ahead. That's okay. Thanks, Professor Mauricio. Uh, could I ask you, uh, uh, did you, uh, do you know this long head of biceps routinely in any case of proximal hemorrhage fractures? Yes, yes, I, 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 I am a biceps killer. <laughs> I, really, I, really, I really think that the biceps is a very good place to have some pain. So yes. uh, in all my, if I need to open a shoulder, not arthroscopically, arthroscopically, I try to maintain the, the, the long head of the biceps. If I do a rotator cuff repair or instability, I try to maintain the, rotator, the, the, the long head of the biceps. But if I open a surgery, I really like to use a groove like my guide to understand the medial part and the lateral part. So I find the long head of the biceps. I quite near open the rotator interval to see the articulation. And I have the greater tuberosity and the less tuberosity in my hands. Then I go to the pector major, passing some suture, fixing the long head of the biceps close to the pector major. Then I cut the, humor, the, the long head of the biceps and use like a guide to go inside the articulation. And then I cut inside the articulation. That's okay. Uh, one last thing about the, the, the reverse, the hemi and the fixation. Um, uh, what I know from the literature that the uh, results when you do a revision by arthroplasty for a failed ORIF, proximal humerus fracture, is not that good. So if you yeah. do arthroplasty from the start, this would be perfect. But if you use the plate without being, uh, without having good uh, um, insight that it will work, and you you plan to do arthroplasty later, this is not a good plan, isn't it? Yes, yes, you agree. I agree with you a lot. Uh, the vicious consolidation is for me the worst result for the reverse arthroplasty. If you made the reverse arthroplasty in the beginning of the treatment, you decide to take out the head, fix the great tuberosity. It's most important to fix the great tuberosity than the less tuberosity because the subscapularis, quite normally, you don't need to have the subscapularis in the reverse arthroplasty. Mm -hmm. But the great tuberosity is very important because you need to have a, a standard rotation with the terus minor, the infraspinatus. Uh, I really try to maintain the supraspinatus too because I think this can increase the power, the strong to make the elevation. But when you have a, a vicious consolidation, you change the anatomy of the proximal humeral head. So you change the biomechanic of your rotator cuff. So you have a poor rotator cuff. You have a, 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 a dyskinesia from the scapula too because you need to change the, 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 the function of the scapula. And the patient had the, the worst results when you compare to doing the reverse atropos in the first time. Uh, so uh, for this, I decide to do my surgery uh, in the beginning of the treatment. During the, the surgery, I, said to, I, I, I always say to my patient, I don't know what we are going to do. We have the plate and we have the reverse. I will do the best. And for me, the calcar support, the medial calcar support is the huge importance idea to understand the consolidation and to fix the great tuberosity using sutures before putting the plate and after that passing another suture to the plate improve the position of great tuberosity and less tuberosity. So it's difficult to have vicious consolidation when you do always the same stuff. So if you decide to do the plate, I try to do my best. If I can't do my best with the plate, I go for reverse because I think it's much easier and more predictable results. 
Thanks. Um, one question about using strut graft like fibula in osteoprotic comminuted elder fracture. Uh, uh, this this is an idea that I really I really like to, but uh, when you have to improve a lot of stuff to create stability in your fracture, it's difficult to use only one way to treat. Uh, if you have only the plate, or I decide to use a plate, but when you see your surgery, there is a big hole in the metaphysis of the humeral. You need to put uh, uh, some bone to create the support. So you need to decide to do that during the surgery too. If you have only plate, the, uh, the graft inside the diaphysis and the metaphysis improve your results. If you have plate and reverse arthroplasty and the patient has a, is an elderly patient, quite normally, I don't use graft. I go for reverse. And for do the reverse, there is one good uh, uh, need to do that. We need to make uh, uh, another side X-ray to understand the length of the humerus, to recover the length of the humerus for the reverse atropacy. Because if you maintain a short humerus, you, 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 you improve the instability of the system. So you have a worse result. So uh, for the plan of the surgery, make the X-ray for the other side to understand the size of the humerus, to, uh, to recreate the better way uh, the size of the humerus to create more stability when you do reverse or amy arthroplasty. Thanks. Another question about using nails for proximal humerus fractures. I don't have an experience. I really, really don't have an experience. I really think that in a two part or sometimes in a three part fracture, you can do the nails. Uh, Dr. Pascal Bolo is changing the way to do his nail. He's going inside to the nevisor portal, not for the lateral, uh, not for anterolateral view. Dr. Pascal Bolo is made your, 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 your nails using the device behind the clavicula, uh, between the clavicle and the spine, the oh. scapular spine. And he go through the diaphysis. Uh, in this way, he always pass your nail through the muscle of the supraspinatus. He maintain the tendon. So he decrease the lesions from the, the rotator cuff and the position we try, we, he abduction a little bit the arm and pass the nail behind to the head of the patient and go through the diaphysis. I think it's a great idea. I really think it's a great idea. And another idea is a percutaneous place too. A small incisions and do a percutaneous plate too. But percutaneous plate and nails, I really don't have experience to talk about that. Having mentioned Dr. Pascal Palou, I got here a question about bony increased offset reverse shoulder. Do you, uh, it, it, it's about the type of the prosthesis. Do you use it or just use another? Yes, yes. I ha I, 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 when I do some atropacy, not in fracture, but if you have some damage in the glenoid, you need to improve your fixation, you need to improve your arthropathy. So if the patient has some uh, disease, some rotator cuff arthropathy, uh, and have some fracture, you need to recreate the glenoid, uh, recreate, recreate the lateral uh, position of the glenoid too. So you can, you can use the humeral head like a graft and, and made a bio RSA to improve the lateral system to recreate the vectors of the deltoid to improve the elevation of the arm, the flexion of the arm. Uh, here in Brazil, uh, I had a system calling Blueprint. Blueprint is a planned system for atropacy. And if you have some damage in the glenoid, I always put my CT scan in this plan. And I understand if I, I need to use the bio RSA or not to improve the movement. Uh, it's today, I'm using more and more and more this kind of way to do the glenoid using a five millimeter or seven millimeter graft from the humeral head to put it behind the, the base plate from the glenoid to, uh, to create a lateral view to improve the elevation. Perfect, thank you. Uh, a very good question about having post-operative axillary nerve palsy. 
how to to deal with such complications that, that that's a crazy one that's a crazy one because uh, in the most part of the axillary, axillary injury is uh, will recover to six weeks to three months it's about the some small trauma to the axilla and uh, quite normally you don't need to go uh, to go to see the axilla nerve but if my patients had a uh, six month and do not recover the axial nerve, I will do the exploration of that. I have a, a microsurgery, a, a guy, a, my friend, a microsurgery, and he goes for me inside. I had a two axillar injury during a dislocation fracture of the humor head, so I need to explore the axillar. And when you explore, there is some damage in the axillar. It's not a, a, a good, a, a big lesion, the, the axillar. And both patients recover. I just wait six uh, weeks to three months if recover in three months okay if do not recover nothing in three months i go for i, I go to see the axler to understand what happens yeah uh, thanks so much again last question i think it's in french and i can't read french uh, <laughs> me too I, so i'm um, just uh my i'm sorry is for our colleague sorry uh, so that's fine. We are done with the discussion. Uh, Thanks so much for such wonderful discussion, uh, Trofeli. Happy to see you. I am, I am, a, I am a huge fan from the lock and plate and the reverse arthroplasty, yeah. uh, and I, 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 I study a lot of this plan. I was creating a plan for a Germany company called Implantcast. I, yeah, I Implantcast. I, I know made, it quite well. I yes. visited its uh, factory in Hamburg. Yes, I made I made part of the consultors of implant cast, and I will we will improve the system from implant class from Agilon. Uh, we are trying to make some small changes to improve the quality of this arthroplasty, and we are uh, make we are we are making uh, uh, a 3D plan for this kind of arthroplasty too. I think in three or four months we will have uh, uh, some news for the reverse arthroplasty here in the world. Dr. Raffaelli, we, we don't want to leave you, but we know that you have a very busy day. So it, it, it's a great honor for us to be with us tonight. Thank you so much. Hoping to see you again and again in our course. And best and wishes for you, sir. Dr. Mohamed, Dr. Ahmed, and Dr. Ahmed, uh, uh, it's, it's fantastic to stay with you guys. Uh, for me, it's is, is very important to make part of that. I really like to do that. I, I like to, to, to teach, I like to prepare my presentation, I like to study my English to, to, to talk a bad English. I'm so sorry if I don't have a, a Oh very good no, it's, because, it's um, very excellent. Because because <laughs> Portuguese English. because Portuguese is a little bit different Portugal too. Is, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I I waited for another invite because I really like to stay with you guys. Thanks a lot. Thank it's you. a huge Thank pleasure to stay with you. Thank, Thank you. you. See you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. See you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.